1 John, the fourth chapter. John wrote, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God shows love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for sin. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit, and we have seen and testified that Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love of God, the God, love that God has for us. Here ends the reading. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Now, most of you know the Beatles and most of you know the song. Love, love, love. Do you know it? Mm -hmm. Love, love. All you need is love. Ba -na 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 -na. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. I always change the Beatles song to say, God's love is all you need. God's love, of course. But uh, the Beatles made millions of dollars on that song. So I thought maybe some of you would know it. Love, God's love is all we need. And yet, there's a struggle with love. Because sometimes we love the stuff more than we love the people around us. Sometimes we love the things that are inanimate rather than those things that bring life to us. When I asked what your first love was, some of you thought of a person, some of you thought of chocolate, some of you thought of your toy train, some of you thought of other things. God's first love was you. God's first love was you. And I hope that inspires you to be prepared to hear the two stories that I have to share with you today. Both of them difficult, but we will begin there in love. I was called out to go see a family. It was rare. I had traveled. It was to the hospital at Wright-Patterson. They don't do anything, so I was surprised I got a call. They came out. I came there, and uh, I walked up, and there was a young man holding a child. And he was crying. Overwhelmed. And I went to the nurse and they said, the child was born without breath. So I went to him and he was un inconsolable. And I said to him, let's go to your wife and let's pray. Again, he was inconsolable. His wife kept saying to him, we can have more children. This prepares us for what tomorrow holds. But he would not let go of that child. And his tears had covered the face of his child. It gave the idea, the image that the child too was and that image has stuck with me for so long because I believe God weeps for his children that will not come to life in him. And he covers them with tears. He covers them with love. And yet they will not listen and they will not breathe in his Holy Spirit. 
Love is not all we need. Sometimes we need understanding. Love enriched in and through us is powerful. There was this jazz great. He was wonderful. His name was Lepree, his last name. And he told the story, and the story was wonderful. You see, he had a granddaughter who had a child, and the child was premature. And if you've ever seen a premature, a premature child now, they can be so young that you can't even imagine that they're surviving. And they have specialized uh, IVs to feed them and so on. Anyway, the, uh, the father of the child left. So the grandfather stepped in and he said, hey, you know, I, I'll help whatever I can. So the nurse said, hey, this is what I need you to do. I need you to go every day, every day, and I need you to sit with this child and I need you just to stroke his arm and say these words, I love you. Because the child will equate what love is through that touch. So true to his word, he supported that child, every day showed up for a month, touching that child in a way that said, through sacrifice and service, through touch, that you are loved. Now all of you have experienced those people who say they love you, but truly don't act that way. They use love as a weapon rather than a gift. Today, I want you to know that God's first love was you, one more time, and that he reaches out to touch your life with Jesus. And he reaches out now so that you might touch others and bring them the hope that has never diminished. He more does more than stroke your hand. He died for you. And he never will depart from you. Today, on this day, all we need is God's love. For in God's love we can reach others. We can feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the imprisoned, and inspire them to see the love found in a child's sacrifice, Jesus. May his love inspire you today, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen.